I'm well yourself. I am magnificently magnificent. It's so good to see you here on a Tuesday. Yay. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ali couldn't be here today. Oh, well, we won't, we won't be able to make up for it, but we will read her intro. <laughs> I will do, yes. Uh, Welcome to the Healing Through Love Show. We're here today to increase awareness within the community about providing family and domestic violence survivors with a soft place to land and to offer advice on services available to these survivors and their families. We have many local businesses and service people who generously pay it forward at our pamper days by providing their time and resources at these events. And each week on this show, we'll be interviewing a couple of those supporters of our Pamper Days to learn more about their personal journeys, their businesses, and why they are supporting Healing Through Love and, um, and, and, and assisting survivors along the way. <laughs> I love it, Rose. Now, Rose is going to jump off and she's going to run the back of the house with uh, sending messages and all of the things that happen in that space. Today, we've got a very incredible guest. We've got one special guest today and we've only got one guest because he's got so much to talk about. We're going to be interviewing Mike DeHaan and uh, I would like to do an introduction for Mike. Oh, and now we've been told to call him Mike, not Michael, just saying. <laughs> only Michael if he's in trouble. Mike is the founder of Hello, Care Charlie. to Grow Proprietary. Hello, Mike. Hi, Mike. I'm just doing a quick introduction. Uh, so he's the founder of Care to Grow Proprietary Limited, a firm with a strong history in financial planning and building wealth That's through property. Split. Hello, Mike. I can hear you. Can you not hear me, Mike? Mike, maybe Mike can't hear me. I'm going to keep reading his intro and hopefully we'll be able to sort out the sound there. So their focus is on mindset and the beliefs to help people in their lives are with the best. And Mike's disappeared, but I'm sure he'll be back in a moment. His vision is to empower people to create more joy, freedom and growth through financial well-being because he has witnessed and overcome the negative impact of financial stress. So Mike specifically today is going to talk with us in and around women in the space of vulnerability and his perfect avatar are women who work in the corporate space. Yes, and he is an advocate for ladies who are in the DV and a financial violence space. So today he wants to offer us some really critical information in and around this space to help women and he's going to share some beautiful tools and techniques that are going to make a difference for us. Now, as a woman myself, I know that finance has been a challenge for me, even as a management accountant, having a really good understanding of what things are supposed to look like. Transitioning to a woman who was running her own business, I found lots of challenges. So I'm today really excited to be interviewing Mike and only call him Michael if he's naughty. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Are you back? Hi, Mike. Are you back? Can you hear us, Mike? Can you hear me? I can hear you, Mike. Yes. Now, Mike has disappeared again. We're not quite sure why. But Mike is going to share with us some beautiful stories uh, in and around what happened to him as a person who has a background in, in accounting and in finances and from the outside looking in, everything looked amazing. But that's not what was happening under the covers. So we're today going to have a conversation around what's really happening for you because we've got this very public face that everybody sees, that we show Facebook, that we show Instagram, that we show LinkedIn, that we show all of those spaces. And then we've got what's happening behind closed doors. And today is going to take us through, you know, peeling back those covers and having a really, really close look at what's happening with your money stories and your limiting beliefs around money. And I'm hoping that we're going to have enough time today if we can get him back on camera long enough to have a chat about money archetypes and how we know which archetype we are. And then by having that understanding, we'll know a lot more about what we need to be doing in that space. I myself had quite a series of interesting money stories. And as with most people, my money story started from my family and what they were saying. So growing up in an environment where 
you know, there were things that were said often where, you know, we don't have money for that. You know, money doesn't grow on trees. You know, that's too expensive. When you grow up in that environment where, you know, we had everything we needed, but it's still there was always this language around money and, uh, and, and not coming from a space of abundance, not coming space, definitely coming from a space of gratitude because both of my parents were ministers, but not coming from that space of abundance. So we always believed, we were taught that, you know, if, if you need it, you'll, you'll receive it through the grace of God. Wow, <laughs> I love that. And if that's what you believe to be so, that's what will be so for you. And that's where these limiting beliefs around money and these stories around money, they, they start in our first seven years. Now, Mike can't be very far away. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I'm doing all the talking in this space. Mike, if you're there, can we have you pop back on camera? Mike, can you hear me now? No? <laughs> so uh, Mike's come and gone again. Uh, I'm sure he won't be very far away. So, so you know, what do you what do you do in this space where you know that you aren't getting the things in life that you want to be getting? What, what, how do you peel back the layers of the onion? How do you find out what your money story is? How do you find out what your limiting beliefs around money? Well, guys, it's really, really simple. <clears throat> it's really simple. You start with your results. What are your results right now? Are you living in a place of abundance? Do you have an extra nest egg? Do you own your own home? Do you have properties that you're invested? Do you have share options? Do you have shares or options? You know, what are you doing in that space? <clears throat> Do you have a position to, <laughs> I'm coughing because I'm not supposed to be the one speaking, but that's okay. I'm going to keep going. Uh, you, do you have a, a nest egg for your children? Are you in a position to be able to leave a legacy? So, so what are your results in this space of money right now? Where do you sit in that space? So once you have a look at that and really honestly have that conversation with yourself, I would start that conversation with yourself before you have the conversation with your partner so that you can get really real about where you are right now and then where you want to be. So working backwards from where you are, that's how you can you can unravel your money story and you can find out where where you are and what's held you in that space. So I love uh, Miriam Casella talks about writing your money story and you know, write the story about you know what you believe around money and it starts from that language that you heard when in your first seven years. So going through and crafting that money story, you know, the one that's existing for you and starting from where your results are, like where, where are you living now and then working backwards to create that story. And then I personally, being a person who really is quite connected to energy and energetic and frequency, I would go through a process of destroying, <laughs> destroying the old money story. I would go through the process of burning it or putting it in the incinerator or chopping it into tiny pieces or shredding it. I would go through the process of getting rid of it. And then I would take the time, effort and energy to imagine the life that you want to live. How do you want life to look for you? What, do you want to have these properties? Do you want to have a nest egg to leave to the children? And then when you can craft what you want your life to look like, then create a new money story, a new language around how you language money. And then from that, you can build it one step further and you can build out your affirmations around money. So, and I, if I asked you guys here, how many of you here have actually written affirmations in and around money? Ah, I know several of us do have them. And I know I've had affirmations pretty much all my life in and around money and they didn't work. And that's because having affirmations is like having affirmations without part two is like having a car without an engine. So, yes, affirmations work and they do work to retrain your reticular activating system, which is another subject we could chat about. Uh, what we do need to do in this space is we need to give give an engine to that car. We need to give we need to give it strength. We need to give it frequency. So how we do that is when you're crafting your affirmations that you've written from your new money story, is get really 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 specific about what you want those outcomes to look like and craft an affirmation. So one of my really early affirmations. Oh, and I have to think about it. Is I give thanks for the millions that are mine by divine right that now pour in and pile up in perfect ways under grace. Thank you, uh, Sonia, you gave me that one. 
Now, that's the affirmation, but what you need to do is when you're building that affirmation is you need to put that car engine in there. So you need to build a frequency into it. So when you're doing that, what you need to do is what does that feel like? So what does it, What engage all of your senses. What does it smell like? What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it taste like? Like build all of your senses into that situation. The best way to do that is have a story. So for me, it's standing on a TEDx stage and I can feel the heat of the lights on my face. I can hear, I can feel the sweat running in beads down my back. <laughs> I can feel my feet as I stand in my stilettos in that flush carpet and I can feel what that feels like, a little bit unstable and I can feel that. I can see the outline of the audience. So I've, so I've, and I can smell the dust landing on the lights. So, you know, build the story of what it feels like because it's the feeling, it's the emotion that's going to drive you forward. So build that frequency, build that inside of you. And then when you say the affirmation, the longer affirmation, is you build that frequency into there as well. And so then what happens is you're programming your mind, you're programming your reticular activating system, you're programming your body to have that energetic response when you say the affirmation. And then what you can do is you can then bring the affirmation down eventually to just a few words. So mine are I am success, I am abundance, money comes to me freely. So that's three of my affirmations I say on a daily basis. So, so find ways to program each of those affirmations, put that car engine into that car body and give those affirmations real punch that will make all the world of difference. So outside of this, then we've also got an opportunity to visualise what you want your perfect life to look like because this too is going to program you for success. We're still waiting for Mike to come back and he still hasn't come back, so I'm going to keep talking. <laughs> and I'm interviewing myself here in and around money <laughs> and we're just doing this so that we can wait for Mike to come back. So let's have a look at visualisations around money. So aside from doing your affirmations, the next thing you want to do or simultaneously is have visualizations because these two tools together, affirmations and visualizations, are going to help you program your reticular activating system so that you can get what you want and move forward. So your visualizations, I love my perfect day. It's my favorite visualization exercise and I take my clients through it and uh, it really does make a difference. So once you've identified what your particular challenges are about you moving forward, and, and I find with women a lot of them are, and Mike will back me up on this, are in and about money and finance, is that we get really, really clear on what your perfect day looks like. And it starts from waking up first thing in the morning. So when you wake up, you know, what's happening? Are you waking up to an alarm? Are you waking up to sunlight in your room? What can you hear in the background? Can you hear waves? Is it raining? Like you, you build absolutely every sense into your perfect day. And then you craft it from first thing in the morning to last thing at night and you visualize it. Now, take some time. It's like crafting a story because you're crafting every single part of it. And in every aspect of that perfect day, you're imagining what it feels like to put your shoes on or not put them on. You're, you're you're imagining what it, what it feels like and smells like. You know, what are you eating for lunch or are you eating lunch? Like you go through every single part of it and you create a story. Once you've created the story, you come back and visit that and make it richer and add other layers on it and make sure that all of your senses are incorporated in there. Once you've got that perfect, it becomes like a dream, then you can go back and revisit it and then you can bring that energy frequency in. And if you can stay in that space and hold that perfect day and you revisit it every day, Revisit your perfect day every day, just even one tiny aspect of it, just revisit it and then you'll get reconnected to that frequency and this is how we manifest the life that we want to live. Now, outside of these things, using your reticular activating systems with your affirmations and then also with your perfect day, then we've obviously got tools and techniques that Mike is going to share with us <laughs> in and around how to best utilise your money. And while we're still waiting for Mike, I might just talk a little bit about my journey around how I went from zero to hero in and around money. And it really does start with finding out where you're leaking. <laughs> so hello, Mike, are you back? It's so good to have you back. No, there's just an empty box there where Mike should be. We've got Rose Davidson popping in. No, perhaps not. I don't know, but I'm going to keep talking. 
Am I? No, we don't know. Rose, I don't know what's happening, so I'm just going to keep chatting. And when we find out what's happening, I'm sure they're going to share it all with us. You know what we should do? We should go to a break. So we're going to go to a commercial break. Rose, if you could take us to a commercial break and then we'll be right back and hopefully we'll be right back with Mike. Rose is going to lead us to a commercial break. Or not? <laughs> Rose, are you going to take us to a commercial break? While we're waiting for that, I'll just tell you about Be Live TV, which is the application that supports us in this space through Healing Through Love, our charity that creates a soft place to land for ladies who've experienced domestic and family violence. Okay, and we're going to our commercial or not. Okay, I this. Hello, how are you going? Hello, Mike, how are you? Are you well? <laughs> we made it. <laughs> so, Mike, I've been treading water, talking about uh, money, money mindset, uh, talking <laughs> about uh, affirmations, <laughs> visualisation, money stories and limiting beliefs while we wait for you to come. So, Mike, can you please share with us uh, what you know in and around this space and, and how you're an expert in this space of money and money mindset? No, sure. And uh, what I did like is one of your affirmations because I could hear you, I just can get on. And that was money flows freely to me. So well done. <laughs> I wanted to share that. <laughs> so what I do, just a bit of a background. So my background is financial planning and banking. I've done that for over 30 years, showing my age a bit. But what, what I found was that there was no one actually talking or coaching around financial wellness. And I want to, I suppose, share with you a story around that and why that's important. So I'm looking after a, a woman at the moment. She's got two children. She's single. And she went. She was on a good income, but she was sort of struggling to get through expenses and just living life, really. She was under a lot of stress. And she went to see a financial planner, and the financial planner said, you've got no money to invest. I can't help you. So she walked out of the room crying. She didn't know where to go to actually get support around her beliefs and, and behaviours around money and how that can improve and how she can live a life without stress. So those sort of stories there do touch me, to be honest. And I've done a lot of work now around financial wellbeing and what that means and I suppose what our sort of limiting beliefs and behaviours can do to us and, and in particular supporting women. So... It's certainly a passion of mine. It's it's a mission of mine, to be honest. And I'll, I'll share a quick a, a story, which I don't probably share that often. But um, a lot of people come to me and say, "You're you're a male. Why why are you so passionate about um, being a service to women in regard to financial freedom, financial independence?" And mine is supporting women around voice and visibility. So, I my twin sister was uh, abused when she was quite young. Um, it was around 12, 13, and she didn't speak up until she was about 16. And she'd gone through, <clears throat> at that stage, drugs and alcohol to sort of mask the pain that she went through. Thank so we, we tried to support her through that, but um, when she was 18, she ended up taking her life. And what I learned from that is that, one, the, the, the remorse and the feeling that we've had to sort of move on, but also... She had no voice, she had no visibility, and she, we weren't able to sort of help her. So it's become my mission in life. It has been for some time. I, I just want to share that with you because I, ideally it brings that sort of context around why serving women is so important to me. Wow. And uh, you, um, you believe there's a connection between the finance and what happens in that space with mental health? Uh, no question at all. Um, what I've done a lot of research around is that financial stress is the leading cause of anxiety, depression and cancer if it's there in your body for long term. And it's one of the leading causes of relationship breakdowns. So 
I've sort of seen how that plays out. I my background is financial planning, so I've been investing, you know, for people for many years, sort of creating that abundance in wealth, but not really enough around that sort of actual well-being. How do you wake up every morning? How do you feel about money? And how do you communicate about money with um, your loved ones, as an example? So I actually had a lot of scarcity growing up and sort of a limiting mindset. I, I had sabotage sort of behaviours that I wasn't even aware of. Um, and what, what I found was that I was a fairly healthy guy, but I started to get anxiety um, because I wasn't telling my truth. I wasn't I was suppressing all these feelings and beliefs around money and there was some shame and embarrassment around money, which I didn't want people to know. So I had a you know quite a bit of ego at that time. So I just found myself moving from anxiety to depression because I wasn't dealing with a lot of those limiting beliefs and behaviours and how it's sitting in my body. And I went down the pathway of getting sicker and actually was diagnosed with prostate cancer at a fairly young age which I overcame, but I actually just, I was trying to work out what's, what's going on, <laughs> what's wrong with me, you know, what, what can I do to improve? And there was no one out there talking about your behaviour around money, your limiting beliefs and what that actually does to your body. So it was still a further two years until I actually started to research that myself. But in that period, I lost my relationship with my wife, who I'd been married for 22 years, and that disconnect with the children to begin with, which is back on board now. But... There's just a lot of learnings, um, Charlene, around that time too, and a lot of pain and going, where, where do I go? Like, what, what do I do? I, I'm just going to get sicker and sicker. So it was around sort of reaching out, educating and learning about this stress and what it's been doing to my body for over 20 years um, and a part of my programming around scarcity and I suppose not, not being worthy of having financial freedom and like how that played out in my life. It, it's again, it, it, I can share the story now and I, I've just got so much passion around it, but boy, it's a, it's a, it's a long journey. And if I can help people down a different pathway and, and support them and love them, well then you know, that's what I'm here to do. Oh, that's so beautiful. So uh, lots of our audience are in a similar situation, either have in that space or have come out the other side and I still have those challenges. Could you yeah. maybe share with us some tools and techniques that would be helpful for, for ladies in this space? Yeah. What I do a lot with our clients is that I actually look at their behaviour around money. So, and what it does, Charlene, is because I didn't know about my behaviours, my emotions, beliefs, and it shone a light on it. And I, I started to resonate with it. So it came up in my body such an awareness about what I thought about money and how that was controlling my life in a negative way. And I work with a lot of people now, they, they see that light and you see this light bulb go up in their mind. They go, I've, I've got that. And I, and generally you get that from when you're young. So generally it's from one of your parents or both parents or community or siblings in regard to your beliefs and behaviours around money. So to actually shine a light and go, I can change that. It's not me. It's just a story that I've had you know, in my body, in my mind, in my heart for many years. And I now understand my beliefs and behaviours around money. Teach me how to change. Teach me how to be empowered. I don't want limiting thoughts and beliefs around money. So I do a lot of work around that. I can actually provide that questionnaire to, you know, the people that are watching this. So I think that's very empowering. Um, I'm big on budgeting, Charlene, and only because, again, it brings the power back to you. So I call it intentional spending plan because I budgeting can be a scarcity <laughs> word. It's not um, a lot of people don't like that word. So, but it starts to bring that control back to you. You start to make choices mm -hmm. about do I do this, do I do that? But it's it's about using your mindset differently and going, I'm empowered. I can choose to do this as opposed to living paycheck to paycheck or not really knowing how your money flows and and not having a healthy relationship with money. Mm, I love it. Do you have any? Sorry, do you have oh, any abundance what? hacks? Abundance what? Sorry. Abundance hacks. Hacks. I love a big relief. <laughs> what I love doing, and this is, I didn't really understand the importance of it, Charlene, until I suppose recently over the last few years, is I'll sit down with a client, 
and and look at their budget and honestly we we need to look at our our debt where, where it is what we're paying in bills there um what we're spending on money that doesn't service and i honestly can find anywhere from 400 to 1500 dollars a month to people and that is buys it they go i've just been doing this i didn't know any better i'm paying one percent above on my home loan or i'm I'm paying for electricity that's double what I should be. I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And these, for them to actually say, I can make four phone calls and save $500 a month, that's that's pretty cool. Mm, so that's, that's a quick hit and everyone can do it. Everyone should be doing it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So um, how do girls work with you? Um, I'm assuming that your client base is female because you've said that. Yeah, 90% of my clients are women, yeah. Yep, yep, women. Okay. And can yep. I ask you a question, Mike? Do you sell do you spell women with an X? No. no. Can <laughs> can I suggest that for your marketing, um, because it's perfect for your client and your avatar, that you spell women with an X. Um oh, really? okay. that's how they speak. So business women and corporate women, they spell women with an X. Thank you. You're so let's take that on board. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Free coaching uh, tip. <laughs> oh yeah, you know you're. We're we're all amongst friends here, Mike. So <laughs> you've given us some great tips and techniques. And yes, I know that we'd love to have a look at that survey just to sort of help and get a better language around our own limiting beliefs yes. and our money stories. Yes. That would be fantastic. How do people work with you, and how do they get their hands on that fantastic story or the fantastic script? So I can send a link to the survey to the questionnaires. I'm happy to do that. Uh, I'll do that after. Our interview and how they connect with me it's a very trusted space um there's a lot of vulnerability in regard to that that sort of meeting so we just go through what i call a discovery meeting just making sure that we can help and making sure we can add value and, and sort of provide an awareness but also a transformation a, a sort of a, a better relationship with money and empowerment so with that we'll actually sit down with them go through an awareness program it's all set there's four meetings looking at money story, beliefs, behaviours and coming up with some pathways that they can see light, yeah. that they can actually see empowerment and say, I, I want that, I, I want to be going that way. <laughs> I love it, Mike. Have you considered actually running this as a group course? That is a really good question and I, I've i actually got a, a women's empowerment series and it's all online. So I've just launched that and I was talked to a few people and they said I wouldn't do it as a group course because it's still money is very much a taboo subject which I'm trying to change it's it's still got the same connotations as mental health where you don't talk money at work you don't talk money in regard to family it's it's as I said there's just so much emotion around it but I'd that's what I'd love to do to actually get a, a pool of people uh, women in particular and talking about what they're learning, how they're becoming empowered and what they're doing differently. It's, it's pretty inspiring. I would look forward to having a conversation with you around that. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Can so I, you're going to share with us a link? One, I just yes. want to share one thing, and I, I spoke with Rose that I, I'm really proud of, is that I started a women's empowerment series and I just launched it. It's reaching out to 10 to 12 women around Australia, 10 so far, um, around how they've used their voice and visibility to make a difference either in business, community, and it's all storytelling. So they're telling mm -hmm. the, the hurdles that they went through in the male-dominated areas and what they did and, and how they've become a true leader, how they've become a true leader in a female sense as opposed to trying to copy a sort of a male leadership role. And it's it's just so exciting. I've Every woman that I've sort of approached or reached out to has said yes. So it was, it was going to be six, Charlene, but now it's uh, 10 to 12, depending. But it might even go further. That's fantastic. And how do they get access to watching that? So I'm just putting it, I'm drip feeding it into social media. So I can put my link on the on the LinkedIn. So And I'll have it on my website. It's not there yet. They're trying to work out how to get it on there. It's got to look great. Um, I think it's very deserving that, you know, it's got a good quality. But if they sort of keep an eye on my website, which is uh, www.caretogrow.com.au, and, and ideally, as I said, they'll be able to access that in, in the next week or a few days. But I've got some amazing speakers coming up. Oh, that's fantastic. And are they going to be able to follow you on YouTube as well? 
I do have a YouTube channel, so I again give me about another week on that. So these are all new things to me. <laughs> it's not necessarily <laughs> my skill set. So I'm reaching out and as I said I've got some great marketing people behind me. I just said I've just got to tell the story. You've got to get it out there. Beautiful. That's it's a, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm not quite sure what happened to us as we missed about 15 <laughs> minutes of our conversation. So, Mike, we might need to have you back again. Um, I, uh, I, I did a reasonable job treading water, but I'm not as good as you would have done in that space. That's okay. So, Mike, thank you so much for coming back a second time and uh, and sharing your knowledge in and around finance. It's a very, as you've said, sensitive subject, especially for women who are um, are in this space of and DV yeah. and FB. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, the links to contact Mike are um, in the Facebook chat and they'll also be in the posts as well and we'll attach them to the video so they can reach out to you. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Mike. Did you have Thank any you. closing words? I, my closing words are is a lot of women don't talk, don't speak up, and I, I want you to lean in. You're deserving of it. You can change your life in regard to, I suppose, telling your story. I, I'm... I, I don't judge. I don't do like I, I'm open up just listening to the story, same as you. So I just ask women to sort of lean in and tell their truth, non judgmental, and it can change their life. Thank you so much, Mike, for sharing. Thanks for joining us today. If you'd like to be involved in the Healing Through Love as either an exhibitor at one of our events or as a volunteer and have the chance to come and uh, show. Us, all you need to do is contact us on our Facebook page, Healing Through Love SA, or email us at htladelaide at gmail.com. And be sure to tune in next week, the same time, one o'clock on a Tuesday. Bye for now.